I want to continue this Dhamma talk uh, on uh, jhanas. Last few days uh, I was talking about uh, the attainment of the first jhana and its uh, factors. I want to conclude that section with uh, a simile that Buddha used to illustrate the experience one gains when one attains the first jhana. That is very vivid, very powerful uh, simile. That simile illustrates the way how one feels when one is in the first jhana. That is, suppose somebody takes, uh, say, laundry powder and put it into a bucket and uh, while pouring water you stir stir the laundry powder with the stirring stick and uh, eventually uh, the laundry powder so well uh, dissolved in water that you cannot see one single lump or grain of powder every tiny little grain of that laundry powder is dissolved in water. Eventually all you see is water. Similarly, when one attains the first jhana, rapture and happiness born from seclusion is so powerful that every cell of that person's body is filled with rapture and happiness. Now, this rapture and happiness is born from seclusion. Seclusion, physical seclusion and uh, mental seclusion. Physical seclusion is seclusion from busy activities, homework, office work, garden work, friends work, parties, dinners, travels, writing, this and that. Temporarily one would be cut off from all this, just like this. So you are not uh, driving, we ask people not to drive when they are in the, in the retreat, not to dance, not to sing, not to parties, uh, not to do any such activities, going to office and attending to children, husbands, wives, nothing, none of those things. Completely cut off from those things that is physical seclusion. And just imagine when you, are, when you have been doing all this for days and days and day in, day out, every day for many weeks, days and months and years, how hectic it is. And simply go away for vacation, leaving all these things. That, this is not that kind of vacation that you normally take. When you go for that kind of vacation, you take all this with you. With, you take your family, you take your work, you take this and that, and still you are not totally secluded. Now here, really secluded, separated from those activities. Moreover, more powerful seclusion, more, more beneficial, effective seclusion, is the 
seclusion from various defilements. They are called, that is called Chitta Viveka. The first one is called Kaya Viveka. Second one is called Chitta Viveka. Kaya Viveka means freedom from activities. Now you are free, except very little work you are doing here and there, but most of the time you are free from physical activities. Then, second is uh, a Chitta Viveka, freedom from various psychic irritants, primarily five hindrances and other uh, uh, various uh, mental defilements. For this reason we tell people over and over again, please don't think of the past, don't think of the future, don't worry about anything, just keep the mind totally clear, free, temporarily. When these two types of seclusions of freedom combined together, you experience joy, happiness, concentration. And this joy and happiness fills your entire body and mind. Just like that bad, what do you call that uh, laundry powder, dissolved in water. Every tiny grain of powder is mixed with water. Similarly, joy is a lump. <laughs> Happiness is a lump that dissolves in your body and mind. And you feel the happiness on your skin, <clears throat> joy on your skin. At the tip of your hair, you feel everything inwardly, outwardly, all your personality is charged and filled with this feeling of joy and happiness. That is not a big deal. What you have done? You separated, you got, you are free from activities, free from hindrances only for a short period of time. Now, how do you know that you have attained the first jhana? We are talking about attaining first jhana. How, do, how does one know that one has attained the first jhana? Well, that also is very simple. You got to uh, keep, you got to be mindful. This is another important thing to remember. Now, we are not completely cutting off of mindfulness. I tell you how we, when we grow, go higher jhanas, I tell you where it becomes more prominent. Now, you are mindful. Because of your mindfulness, uh, several things can happen. One, one of the factors of mindfulness is remembering. Sati means memory. You remember. You remember every tiny step you followed to attain the first jhanic experience, you remember. And that is why the Buddha said, Upatita sati sayang dhammo nayang dhammo mutta sati sa. This dhamma is for one who can, who has mindfulness, not a one who does not have mindfulness. This is dhamma that we experience, is dhamma. This dhamma is very good for one who is mindful. So mindfully we one factor of mindfulness is remembering, sati. 
So we remember the steps that we follow. So we see our uh, hindrances one by one fades away and they are replaced by dynamic factors, friendliness, generosity, compassion. We take these three together call, to call and call them uh, initial application of thought. That is, that is the moment when these three thoughts become strong. That is the moment we launch, we take off from other things into the realm of jhanic experience. That is why it is called initial application of thought. And you have to be mindful about it. Mindfully, we take off. And then arises confidence, joy, happiness, and the spark of lum light coming from a luminous mind. That instant we gain concentration. Next moment we might lose that. As soon as we gain it, perhaps we might lose it. And therefore, we, as we remembered, we, as soon as we lose it, we start all over again. Not very difficult, because we have already done the preliminary spade work already. And therefore, the second attainment is easier. Third is still easier. Fourth is still easier. When we keep repeating again and again the same thing, we become perfect in that. We, have, we become perfect in the attainment. The first jhana itself has three levels. Preliminary level, medium level, and superlative level, highest level. That is why when, uh, if somebody dies in the first jhana, if the, if the person dies in the preliminary level of first jhana, that person will be born in uh, lowest Brahma realm, called Brahma Parisajya. <laughs> I mean, if you are interested in going that way. If you are in the middle, uh, medium level of the first jhana and die in that level, you will be born as a Brahma Purohita, second Brahma realm. If you die in the last or the highest level of first jhana, you will be born as a Mahabrahma. Leave those things alone. You don't have to worry about those things. Don't try to die in jhana. <laughs> if you die in jhana, you will be very happy. That is the best way to die. Even the Buddha died in jhana. Not the first, but the fourth. Not because he wanted to be born somewhere, but that is for another reason. Anyway, uh, there are levels of jhana. And these levels we attain depending upon our perfection. If we perfect in, that, in the first attainment, we can reach the highest level. So when we reach the highest level, there is nothing more to do with that jhana. But if you want to attain it, you can attain very quickly. That is why Buddha said, Nikamalabi, Akichalabi, Akasiralabi. When you attain the first jhana and master it and perfect in it, you, it comes to you naturally. It comes to you without any effort it comes to you automatically. When it comes to you automatically, only then you begin to see, every time you come to that jhanic attainment, you begin to see the defect, weakness of that jhana. There is an inherent weakness, and there is a uh, another weakness, a grossness 
weakness of grossness, that is the inherent weakness. And the other weakness is weakness because of nearness to hindrances. Nearness to hindrances. Hind we, the, the, jhana, the first jhana is near hindrances because we just manage to suppress them. We manage to suppress them. And since we have not eliminated them, they are still quite alive. Anytime they can attack us and weaken the jhana. And therefore, uh, the mo closest and most difficult, most uh, damaging one is the, although it is initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, these are wonderful thoughts, as I mentioned earlier. Before we attain it, they are wonderful. Once we master it, they are not so wonderful. It is just like anything else. You learn uh, uh, to climb a tree. How difficult it is at the beginning. Once you climb it and climb again and again and again, it is not a big deal, no, there's no thrill. Climb a mountain, doing something for the first time. It is wonderful when you repeat it again and again, it is not so wonderful. Even there, we have this uh, <laughs> diminishing marginal return. <laughs> you see? When you repeat the same thing over and over again, whether it is food or whether it is pleasure or whatever, when you repeat it, gradually its original impact, original thrill so diminishes. When it is, when the thrill, the joy, pleasure slowly diminishes, there is no great incentive to go there. And then you look for something else. <laughs> That's the nature of imperfection, nature of uh, desire. Even in the attainment of jhana, although we suppress desire, there's a desire, a very subtle desire, to gain something higher than that. Because this attainment is not perfection, perfect. So, first thing you lose interest in is initial application of thought and sustained application of thought. When you lose interest in it, you just don't pay attention. When you do not pay attention, you, your mind, uh, when you attain uh, the perfection of the first jhana, and when you reach the perfection, and since you do not have interest in the first factor of jhana, then uh, the mind, since mind is looking forward to something higher, when the perfection is reached, you step into the second jhana, almost automatically. You know, some people, this is where sometimes I disagree with certain uh, descriptions. Some say, uh, you deliberately think of the, the second jhana from your uh, theoretical understanding. I myself used to believe that, but I don't believe in that anymore. But when you reach this first, the highest uh, degree of the first jhana, mind glides into the second jhana. Now, during the, in the, when you are in the first jhana, when you reach its highest level, you don't feel any physical pain. That is another thing 
you can another another uh, uh, factor that uh, makes you understand that you are in the first jhana. You don't feel physical pain. Second, you will see all initial applications, sustained application, joy, happiness, and concentration working together in unison as one unit, one team. You feel joy, happiness, concentration, and these beautiful thoughts of initial application and so forth. It is actually not the thought at that level. It is the feeling, feeling of friendliness, feeling of letting go of anything. No matter what uh, happens, you just don't hold on to it, let it go. I say usually, just like um, water pouring into the duck's back, it doesn't hold. Water rolls down into the lake. Similarly, when a greed arises, you are not interested. You just let it go. It disappears. That kind of feeling you have. So therefore, when you have all this, you know that you are in the first jhana. When you are in the second jhana, you know immediately, ah, now I am in second jhana. You don't say it in words, but you know. How do you know? There are certain, certain factors which you did not notice in the first jhana. They were there in the first jhana, but you did not notice them. Why you did not notice them? Because they were overshadowed by the first jhanic factors. First jhanic factors, as I, did, as I said, are gross. And therefore, these gross factors overshadowed subtle factors. When you are in the second jhana, the factors are very subtle. What are they? Uh, when you are in the second jhana, you don't have initial application, sustained application at all. You know that you are in the second jhana because when, there is, when initial application, sustained application are no longer there, what happened? Your vocal cord stops to th think in words. That means not only thinking process, not only vocal cord, thinking process stops. Because initial application, sustained application are called thinking condition, verbal conditioner, or word conditioner. What is sankhara? Sankhara means conditions or conditioned or conditioners. Either they are sankhara means conditioner or conditioned or conditioning. So initial application, sustained application means thinking, as I said yesterday. Uh, vitaka, vitaka means thinking. Thinking stops when you are in the second jhana. And that is where you will have a noble silence. Second jhana is called Aryotunni Bhavo. Second jhana has a name, the noble silence attainment. Normally, when you don't talk, you put a label here. I observe noble silence. <laughs> that is not noble silence, it is just a fake noble silence. <laughs> you just don't talk. But inwardly, thinking process going on. You cannot do it deliberately. Without going through this process, you cannot stop thinking process. Only when you go through jhanic training and attain the second jhana, thinking process stops. And therefore, at that time, we have noble silence. That is one, one way of knowing that we are in the second jhana. At that level, we don't think, ah, my thinking stops. I am in the second jhana. <laughs> 
then you are not in the second jhana. <laughs> the moment you think it is a sort of a, like catch-22, <laughs> you, you know that you are in the second jhana, and the moment you think that you are in the second jhana, you are not in it. <laughs> it is very tricky, isn't it? But you are fully aware that the words are not coming to my world, thinking is not coming to your mind. This has been mentioned uh, by the Buddha in many places in, uh, in uh, Anapana Satisutta, he mentioned that, and uh, Sister Dhammadina mentioned it in Chula Vedana Sutta in Majjhima which Buddha approved. And uh, in several other places, at least these two places you can remember, that uh, the initial thoughts, sustained thoughts, stops at the second jhana, where you will have a noble silence. Then <coughs> there is another thing, internal confidence. Ajyatam sampasadana, inner confidence. Now, uh, even in the first jhana there is inner confidence, but that confidence is not as strong as in the second jhana. Why? Even the confidence can be uh, sort of wavering, there is a wave of thoughts in the first jhana, and therefore confidence also is in shaky ground, so long as there are waves of thought, you don't have full confidence. But when you come to the second jhana, when this initial application, sustained application stops, your confidence becomes very firm. What, did this, what does this confidence do? That confidence makes things very clear. Some prasadana. Confidence has two, fa two um, characteristics, two functions. One is called sampakhandana, the other is some prasadana. Sampakhandana means jumping. You, that is the characteristic of faith. Uh, as soon as you see something appealing, you jump and grab it. That's what faithful people do. Out of faith, when they see something, they just grab it without any thinking, no reasoning, no logical, rational thinking. They just grab it. That is called sampakkhanda, jump to grab. But when confidence, when faith is based on understanding, that has another character, another function. That is sampasadana. When the faith is based on understanding, there will be clear, it, that faith has the function of cleansing, clarifying, making things very clear. Because um, it is based on understanding. Therefore, if the faith is not based on understanding, it has one function, that is jumping and grabbing, and that is what is called uh, sadha bija, the seed of faith. And the other, when, when the faith is based on understanding, it uh, clears all the mud, all the you know, muddy, unclear, what you call things, uh, move away and shows things very clearly. That is the second function and more important function. So the faith arises in the second jhana uh, with this function, clarifying things, making things uh, clear, or sort of verifying, clarifying, verifying things.
in the second child. It is called chet so ajatan uh, sampasadana. And as a result, when things become clear, then eko di bhava. The mind begins to unify things. All loose ends bring together. Because when things, when things become clear, you know how to pull things together. Mind can pull things together when the things are clear. And that is another thing that happens in the second jhana. Then, uh, when you are in the second jhana, uh, rapture and happiness is even more powerful, more subtle, more deep and strong, because that uh, rapture or joy and happiness arise from concentration. From concentration. The first journey for uh, joy and happiness arises from being secluded from sense pleasures, secluded from unwholesome state of mind. Viveka jampi iti sukham in the first jhana. Joy and happiness arises because of the freedom from these activities and mental impurities. Not so much from concentration, although concentration is there, that concentration is not powerful enough to arouse this state. When you go to the second jhana, concentration is so powerful that it arouses the joy and happiness. And therefore joy and happiness in the second jhana is even more powerful. Now, one more thing I want to mention about the faith. There are three places where faith arises. The confidence arises. One, at the preliminary level, before attaining jhana, ordinary people, because of their nature is such that they trust. They trust anything and anybody and believe. That is the first level. That is the most common level. And most people have that kind of faith. Second level is when one attains the second jhana. The third level, when you attain the second level, that is stronger than the first level of, of faith, first level of faith. When you attain the, when you gain the third uh, level of uh, confidence or faith, that is what is called unshakable faith. Uh, Achala Sadda in Pali, Achala Sadda, unshakable faith. That unshakable faith arises not only when things are clear, but when things are realized, not only clear, but when you realized, when uh, certain things that you believed turns out to be a reality, then arises unshakable confidence. That is when one attains the first stage of sainthood, stream entry. So there are three levels of uh, uh, faith. Now, uh, second jhana, uh, when you are in second jhana, you are uh, joy and happiness or rapture and uh, happiness 
uh, arise from concentration. Either the concentration you gain from the first jhana or the concentration you gain from the second jhana. But it is more likely that we gain joy and happiness from the first, second jhanic concentration because in the second jhanic concentration, uh, in second jhanic level, uh, joy and happiness uh, uh, becomes uh, strong because of uh, the strong one-pointedness of mind. It is also unshakable. Now, second jhana, uh, is achieved by eliminating initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, which are absolutely necessary at the very beginning. But when we want to attain the second, we eliminate it, we let, let go of it, we don't pay any attention, we just bypass it. Sometimes, um, uh, I like to give an illustration, very also quite uh, vivid illustration. Suppose you uh, want to meet a very uh, a prominent leader, say uh, the president. Uh, President of the United States. Before he became president, probably you would be able to meet him, but once he became president, it's very difficult. Security is very tight. So, you had to establish your credential. So, you find a friend of the president. And who happened to be your friend as well? Through that friend, you establish acquaintance, relationship, friendship with the president. First time you go there, through, you go through your friend. Once you establish confidence in him, then the second time you may not need your friend to meet him. You would simply uh, make an appointment, you take the telephone and say, Mr. Bush, can I see you? And you, he would say, oh, come on in, have a lunch with me. So you go. Uh, similarly, <laughs> when you attend the second jhana, <laughs> you don't, initial, don't need initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, because you have already passed through this, that level, mind is ready, mind simply bypass that and attend the second jhana. When you attain it, <coughs> you feel the difference. You feel the difference between the first attainment and the second attainment. In the second jhanic attainment, the one thing you don't have thoughts, second thing your concentration is extremely powerful, more powerful than the first one, joy and happiness uh, also very powerful, and your inner confidence, inner confidence makes things very clear. And within yourself, in your mind, you can see the clarity. In the first one, everything is okay. Only now we look at the first one from the point of view of the second. When we look at the first one from the situation, from the position of the first, second, then the second, first is not that very clear. It is weak, it is not clear. Uh, joy and happiness also is on a, with some rough edges. When you come to the second level, joy and happiness is very smooth, subtle and more refined. Concentration is more powerful, mind is so clear, 
and steady uh, and uh, no thought. And that situation is uh, uh, explained with another illustration, another simile. That is um, like a lake, lake that has uh, a spring underneath, at the bottom. And that um, spring brings uh, water, not gushing water, but very softly, gently fresh water always runs into the lake underneath. On the top, there's no rain, no dirt, whatever, even the dust is there will be, flow, will be washed away by overflowing the water. As water flows into the lake from the spring at the bottom, and water continues to overflow the lake with whatever dirt is there. And Buddha says, similarly, when you are in the second jhanic level, joy and happiness continuously refreshing. Whatever you are losing would be replenishing by fresh joy and happiness coming into the mind all the time. Why and how? Because there are no ripples of thoughts. No ripples of thoughts. All you have is the feeling of joy and happiness coming and uh, welling up the joy and happiness all the time in your mind. And yet, you tend to lose that because it is not permanent. You hold it for a certain period of time, as long as remain, you remain mindful. As long as you remain mindful, it is the mindful that holds these things together. Mindfulness. And mindfulness is not very strong yet, and therefore since the mindfulness becomes weak, these factors also become weak and you lose it. Particularly, <coughs> joy, as I said, is uh, uh, opposite of uh, resentment, anger, disappointment. You will be disappointed because you have to maintain this. With great effort, you got to maintain it. That making, having done so much work and attain it, still you got to maintain, you got to have an effort to maintain it. Over that, you become disappointed. Because you got to keep uh, uh, replenishing it, keep uh, repeating, keep uh, making, uh, holding it with uh, mindfulness, with effort and so forth, there will be a subtle degree of disappointment. And then joy will slowly fade away. When that happens, each time you attain it, just like the first journey, you keep attaining it again and again and again and again, many, 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 many times. As soon as you lose it, you remember how you attain it, and you attain it, determine, before you attain, you determine uh, to get out of it, and to re-attain it, and to reflect each factor of the second jhana, so that you can repeat it again and again. And that also has three levels, ordinary level, medium level, and super, uh, the highest level. <coughs> when you attain the highest level, by, by repetition, 
each time you attain it, you see the weakness of the joy. So we, why you want to hang on to weak factor? You let it go. Now the second jhana, <coughs> Uh, is uh, more uh, effective, more powerful than the first jhana, uh, because uh, joy, because of non-existence of thought, and joy, happiness uh, uh, is uh, refreshing, and moreover, confidence is strong and concentration is very powerful. Because of these factors, second jhana becomes uh, more uh, powerful than the first one. Now, more clear, more concentrated, more full of joy and happiness than the first one. And it also has a degrees, first degree, second degree, and higher degree just like the second. Each time you attain higher levels, the mind becomes uh, more subtle, uh, more uh, calm and more peaceful, more uh, serene. <coughs> so it is not difficult to make the distinction between the first one and the second one. Second one you can see more refineness, more clarity than the first one. Now, if you want to switch on to uh, uh, vipassana from the second jhana, from the first jhana also you can practice vipassana. Uh, even in the second jhana there are vipassana elements. I think I better not uh, dwell upon it right now because if I were to talk about that, it will be drifting away our, your mind from uh, the jhanic factors. Let me finish the jhanic explanation and then I come back to each jhana and show you the way how we use the jhana to gain uh, insight, practice vipassana, and I, can, I, I want to show you how the jhana becomes an integral part of vipassana meditation. I want to show you that, but not today. Uh, I want to um, suspend that until I uh, finish uh, the series. So, uh, going to the third jhana. <coughs> third jhana is even more special. Why? In the third jhana, there are factors which you have not even dreamt in the first and second. And sometimes one may wonder how all of a sudden these unexpected factors appear in the third jhana. <coughs> What are the unexpected factors? Of course, when you attain the second jhana, you let go of your uh, rapture. You will have happiness and concentration. Plus equanimity, clear comprehension and mindfulness. In the third jhana, you have Happiness, concentration, equanimity, clear comprehension, and mindfulness. Do you believe that? I want to <coughs> get me the book. Okay. 
This is the second, third jhanic formula. I can say it in Pali, although I recite this in English hundred times, maybe several thousands of times, I still don't remember that. <coughs> Pali is Pityaj Viraga Upekki Kochu Viri Satocha Sampajanu Sukhanchakaya Nipadisangvedidi Yantangari Achikanti Upekki Kochu Satima Sukha Vihari Tatiyajjana Upasampaji Viharati. This is English. With the fading away of rapture, one dwells in equanimity, mindful and, mindful and discerning, and one experiences in one's own person that happiness of which the noble one says, happily lives one who is equanimous and mindful. Thus one enters and dwells in the third jhana. What do we have here? Dwells in equanimity, Mindful and discerning. Discerning is clear comprehension, sampajanya. And experience is one's own person, that happiness of his noble one say, happily lives one who is equanimous and mindful. <coughs> so, you don't have these things in the second and first jhana. No mindfulness. No clear comprehension, no equanimity. <coughs> All of a sudden, you are following the same steps, same procedure. You did not uh, go off the track to pull mindfulness from somewhere or pull equanimity from somewhere to, um, you know, pull. Uh, uh, clear comprehension from somewhere, but all of a sudden they began to emerge from the third jhana. Or oh, in the third jhana. <coughs> Where do they come from? I think I stop here. <laughs> you think of them, you think of them, and uh, <clears throat> perhaps because when I start talking on that, it takes another uh, hour or so to explain uh, the way how they came in to the third jhana. <clears throat> I stop here not just to arouse your curiosity, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, it happened so, I, uh, you know, whether I planned it or not, it so happened that it arouses curiosity. Don't think about it when you meditate. <laughs> but when you are not, medita not meditating, just uh, think about it. Tomorrow I talk about it. <coughs> 